consent agenda. Can you pull E out? Yeah, yeah, what's going on today. Okay. Uh, 4A down to 4E with the exception of? Uh, I will be recommending uh, 14 appointments out of the extracurricular, and I'll, I'll mention those specifically when that comes okay, we'll, up. Okay, we'll pull out E. Uh, all the way to F. Looking for a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, discussion? Oh, we can't discuss it. No, no, okay. we can't it all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, looking for a motion for E. Uh, moving from the JV's boys soccer down to the varsity girls volleyball coach only. Where is it? Uh, page, page three. About 13 or 14 down. Okay. Down to the varsity girls volleyball coach. Do we still have the JV's boys varsity soccer coach? Is he still working? Um, yeah, half yes. time. Half yes. time. Half time. Yes. Yes. Uh, varsity girls volleyball. Which is about eight up from the bottom. Basically, the fall sports. The fall sports. These are the fall sports. Okay. Yes. Some of these folks are already coaching. That's part of the reason yeah. to approve these. So down to Angela McLennan. Okay. Yes. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Moving to correspondence. Do we have any? Yep. Administrator's report. I'd like to start with uh, Mr. McGuire. Do you have anything? Uh, well, most of my things are just wrapped up in the agenda. I will say we're, uh, we're attending uh, uh, the Hope Foundation workshop in Ithaca. Uh, just confirms the work we're doing. The fact is, one of our teachers, uh, Laura DeSantis, is a, was a presenter today. And uh, I went to her session, and uh, she, she was presenting on the Common Core Standards, which is, uh, we mentioned in the board goals this year, and uh, math, and looking at student work. And uh, Jeannie's there, and Sarah's there, and a couple of our other teachers. So it was a good, it was a good day. That's all I have for you. Um, just to update you, we our auditors are here and will be here for the next week or more. Um, so we provided a lot of financial data. Um, I can tell you right now that we have roughly 300,000 in carryover encumbrances, um, which means we anticipate those expenditures from 11, 12. However, we have not yet paid those out. Um, and I'm looking forward to providing a greater level of financial detail in the future after our auditors are is this the external or internal? External. How much longer for the document? Um, I don't anticipate information from them until at least the end of August, early September. So two and or three more. And that won't be their final document, but I'll, I should Two or three more board meetings between now and Correct. All right. Mm -hmm. And is it too early to determine how that's going? Really? Uh, yeah, because they just came today. Today went great. Yeah. They got their computers plugged in. Yes. Lots of them. <laughs> There are three of them on site, and they worked all day. Thank you. Sarah? Um, just one thing. I don't see a special ed um, on the recent agenda. No, I think oh, did I leave it off? Oh. I think I didn't. Oh, no, You mean the recommendations for CSE, CPSE? My apologies. I think they're, they're included in the they're in the packet, but the resolution isn't in here. We want to do it separately. Suspect.
Um, and we're also, we have the iPad training for um, the teachers who will be working with the students, um, special ed students who will be getting the iPads um, so that they can just deepen their understanding. They've been given the iPads over the summer to kind of play with and um, to look at the specific apps for, um, for their needs. And so that training happened. Um, as well as a writing um, curriculum training, we're really focusing in on student work and how to look at student work as a process in order to build um, build curriculum in order to kind of have a common understanding for priorities in the district for curriculum. And building our understanding for SLOs, student learning objectives, we've been doing a lot of work with um, Michelle Robinette and Cheryl Coble um, from BOCES trying to get just wrap our heads around the whole process for SLOs and um, so that we can help our teachers with that. Um, and then next week I will be attending a conference in Albany for um, the Common Core Learning Students. So a uh, five-day training in Albany to kind of deepen my understanding of the Common Core. So. And uh, we've been working, I think I talked about it earlier, um, with our teachers on the SLOs coming in um, voluntarily to spend three hours a session writing their SLOs. So we have uh, written SLOs for all teachers in grades, kindergarten, first and second. Can you, can you give us an example of what an SLO is? What it would read like in math? Um, what would be a what would be something you'd expect in a, a third so learning? There are different sections. So there are, some of them are very simple to define. Uh, one is population. So when they have their students um, assessed, we'll know exactly which students' names to plug in. Um, we know which assessment. We've chosen star assessment, so we can plug that into that. This all goes into a template that we're working with on Google Docs. Um, and what you have to um, use is the assessment to determine what kind of growth you want to see in a student. So say for math. When they so it's individualized, individualized for each growth. student based on some data. Okay, so then you have to write something for each student. So what we will do, where the, the assessment tool we chose is STAR, and it has um, the capability of using all the data from all the millions of students who took the test before. So say Joe gets this score on his first assessment being of the year. Um, this, it will compare his, um, his score to all students just like him who get that score, and they will predict what his success will be at the end of the year and that would be his growth and then you can either you know you could just say that we're going to be a little conservative and say that you know there's some we're going to move his growth this way or he's going to have a banner year we're going to move his growth up but each student we have to choose what their growth will be so it's pretty intense work choose so, your expectations yeah, we're, we're being we're being very careful with expectations that we're not being um, and we're not choosing something that's too difficult because the or too easy or too easy. We're trying to find something that's what we're calling a moderate growth expectation, and then a teacher has to have at least eighty percent of their students meet that target. So it's pretty intense work, and it's it's very confusing. And the, but the teachers are engaged in the process. Absolutely. Uh, um, and, and coming in and spending their own time. Well, they're going to get assessed on. It would make sense that they knew how to do what they're going to get assessed on. And just to add to what Mike said about the conference, we also got to hear from the commissioner today. Oh, he was a right. guest speaker. I thought he was on vacation in North Carolina. <laughs> John Keenan. Did you say John Keenan? I, I met the commissioner. Oh. Yes. <laughs> the other John. The other John. The one that's supposed to wrong. So it was, it was um, interesting to hear. Um, he did a Q&A after he for a while and um, people asked him some tough questions and I would say he had a difficult time answering some of them so it was, it was very interesting yeah I see he himself up to that yeah he, he was pretty vulnerable but he's a kill the messenger that's a kill the messenger smart situation <laughs> yeah very smart uh, one question, is the kindergarten enrollment increased any since our last conversation? No, it has not. We are at about either 67 or 68 the last time I knew. So we have moved forward with four sections. We have done placement. Um, so unless something drastic happens, which at this point I really hope it doesn't because we'll be sending out
know, letters to parents, find who their teacher is. And once that's done, you don't want to turn that chip around. So um, I would we're moving forward. With How big does that number have to get for you to turn that ship around? About 80. How often would you get 15 kids in three weeks? Um, it's pretty unlikely. I mean, it could happen, but it's, it's very Has unlikely. it ever happened? We, I think the most we've had is 12 register over a summer. We haven't had any. So unless they're all just waiting somewhere. <laughs> in a cave? <laughs> somewhere. The Lost Boys? <laughs> they're all at the Olympics. Pardon? They're all at the Olympics. Yes, yes. they're all at the Olympics. Thank you. That's our smallest class right ever. By half. That's half the kids that graduate. Yes. yes. That's the biggest reduction we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. But, uh, I don't have any bad to play on. Do you have anything, Mike? A couple of things. Uh, phase three is progressing right on schedule. Um, we fortunately got some very good contractors this time. Uh, GC is wrapping up in the elementary school with the wall reconstruction. I'm just finalizing the lower wing now. Electrician is finishing up the PA system as you can see some of the remnants in uh, this building here. Still a few units on order. That was a special order part. So um, those things are out there. The wireless system, uh, uh, the contractor there is completing the installation of the wireless access points at the middle school this week. So all the wiring, all the devices should be connected. Um, we're still working with Finger Lakes Technology to finalize the connections to our network. Um, we hope to have that all up and running um, shortly. Um, so in maintenance projects are going along as scheduled. We're at about the halfway point here and everybody's uh, right on target where we thought we would be. Construction always slows us down a little, but we're in pretty good shape with that. Transportation, uh, we're continuing with uh, our rerouting. Uh, Mrs. Porter's been working on that for a couple of weeks since we uh, converted over the new TransFinder software program. Uh, we're in pretty good shape, I think. There is the possibility, we're not sure yet, we're looking at the possibility of cutting one run out. Um, we won't be able to finalize that until probably next week once we're we bouncing students around a little bit to see what those um, numbers and primarily what the ride time looks like. Um, we're trying to keep kids ride time to an hour or less. Um, it's just uh, it's one of the things that we're working with, that we're struggling with. Um, there will be letters going out to all parents, not just kindergarten parents as there has been in the past, um, <laughs> alerting them to some of the changes. Um, each parent will be notified of the new bus, new driver, new pickup, drop off time. And we also have to get the new alternate transportation request completed for all students. Um, much of the data that was in the old TransFinder software was outdated. There were some that were five or six years old still in there. So when we rolled over to the new system, it was all deleted. So we're going to update all of that with all brand. We'll send the request to them right with the cover letter and everything and see if we can get in that in the system pretty quickly for them. Um, that's pretty much the Reader's Digest. How, how does the uh, new recently signed law, maybe a couple months now, that we don't have to hold a seat for every child in the school effect? Do we have made uh, use of that? Well, um, we're looking at that. We did attendance um, six different times throughout the last school year, and ridership varies greatly depending on the athletic season, the time of year. Um, when it's good, you'll get a lot more walkers um, than just to, to ride your bikes or ride with a friend to school or just my wants to take the car. There's just so many variables in there that we, it's difficult to really put your finger on it. But one of the reasons we're looking at pulling one of the routes is we, we do feel confident that we can bump um, the actual um, potential ridership up on some of our routes, not all of them. For instance, if you take some of the village routes that we have here, you may only have 25, 26 students on in the morning, but you're going to have 45 to 50 in the afternoon because most of your daycare providers are near within the village or near its boundaries. So it's very difficult to, you know. Well, I would expect the population that we just talked about the mission by 50% from what we uh, graduated one grade, that would have a 
of benefit to that will have some effect but if you spread that out over 23 routes you're talking two kids and that's not going to make or break any bus route um, we're struggling more, more than with ridership our biggest issues are distance and ride time we now just we picked up three new kids this year they're actually on our border with our neighboring school districts. They're the farthest points we've ever traveled, three of them in opposite directions. So each one of those bus runs is gonna be probably five to six minutes longer every morning you have to go out and pick up that one child. So final question, how are you in the process of bidding runs or is that completed? That, um, um, that actually is supposed to be finalized by the end of next week. We'll have all the new run itineraries, the new maps, Drivers are going to have Monday and Tuesday, the 13th and 14th, to review them. They're in on the 15th for their mandatory refresher training and also to bid routes. We will have those routes assigned on the 16th. And then shortly after, the letters will be going out to parents. Mr. Bliss? Thank you. Um, well, it, it boils down to a couple of things. We've been focusing on studying our current hardware and software assets we what we call a network and server audit to make sure that as many of our configurations as possible meet or exceed best practices. At the same time, we've completed the school tool rollover, so the student information system is ready for next year. Scheduling has begun. That's all in order. We've also been rolling out new hardware, new desktops, as well as the wireless system. It's like how we've done. We have a little more to do to bring it all up, but we're very excited about it and it's going to be a great step forward. Uh, and, and last but not least, it's the important software application teach scheme, which is going to support the APPR process. That's moving front and center, and that, that's something that me and Michael McGuire are working on in just this week. Could you give us a little rundown of the tablet training? The sure. I uh, guess Sarah mentioned in her uh, uh, report, uh, uh, both the fifth and ninth grade classes that are users of the Galaxy tablet received a training, as, as did the special education teachers that will be implementing the iPad tablet. There will also be a second training for the Galaxy uh, tablets for those who weren't able to make the first training. Uh, I attended uh, the second half of the training, and I just want to remark that I thought uh, Jason Clark did an excellent job. He's an excellent instructor. He's just not uh, knowledgeable in technology, but he makes learning fun. I saw the teachers enthusiastic about the learning process, engaged in asking great questions. And I had a really good feeling about those teachers taking those tablets into the classroom. And he's also instructing on the proper use of the whiteboard. This is under under consideration. I have a meeting with Jason on Friday to clarify his role in smart board training. We have uh, uh, training resources both with OCM OCs through Jason Clark and TST OCs who are involved in the model school program. And we're going to combine those resources to deliver training the teachers of smartboards. Thank you. Nice to hear from you. Thank you. Open forum. Yes. You hear it? New business. 8A, move for a motion for 8A, the school calendar alteration. So move. Move for a second. Second. Any discussion? Is this, where does this fall with the, the traditional um, conference day that we have? With, um, right before it. This, uh, so this, this, this isn't in addition to that? There's not a conference day and then Columbus Day weekend? There's a conference day, Columbus Day weekend, and this is the Thursday before the Friday conference day. Does that make sense? I'm sorry. There's already a conference day on Friday, and, and I, I'm requesting the to add one on Thursday. Yes. Yes. So the fifth they're out of school, and the fourth is the third. And then Columbus Day. So they'll actually have a one, two, three, four, five day, you know, if you stretch it all out, add them together with the weekend in there. The, the purpose? Uh, the focus? focus on SLOs, APPR. This year, really intense work. And they're all due by October 15th, and so we, we really need it. You have a little leeway. How many of these can you have? Uh, I'm, I don't think I'll ask for much more than this one. I mean, because I want to watch some more because I think the train is good. I uh, think this might be a year to sort of, I mean, we sort of didn't treat the teachers right last year with throwing those tablets at them with the training they're getting this year. Um, it seems to me with all that's coming down, 
you need more superintendent days and it's not a burden legally to do it, I think we as a board sort of like you doing the training if you need it. Well, we'll I, I'm kind of conservative, as you know, so uh, we have four days built into the calendar and this will, this will leave us three. So um, I may, but um, I, I want to, you know, the principals will help me make that call a lot because they'll know what they're getting done. Well, don't, I don't know, just, we don't want him to feel like he said that. No, I, yeah, no, I, no. I yeah. no, that's, it's a good it's question. Unusual, yeah. Well, it's a day, you know, it's another day when kids aren't in school and that's important, so. Um, but it, this is, this year with APPR and the SLO is very important, very important. And our middle school, you know, getting a new principal, it's just, there's a lot of reasons to add that day. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, I'd like to do uh, 8A or 8B and C for a motion for uh, appointment of a special ed teacher one full time and approval to increase the school and monitor positions two full time. So moved. Second. Discussion? Well, what, what's the deal on the monitors? Who was asking? Sarah can speak to that. We have a kindergarten student who's coming in um, who needs a one-on-one -on -one aid um, because the, the child just isn't safe to be on their own um, at this point. So there's an aid that was put with him through CSE. Is that the monitor? That was the monitor, yeah. That's what, I think that's what we call them, the aides, our school monitors now. Um, and the other monitor was for a 12 one, -one class um, that we needed to add for the K-2 level. Um, and that monitor will assist the teacher in helping them instruct the students. Um, because there could potentially be 12 students with very, very intense needs. So the aide is there to help, or the school monitor is there to help um, with instruction to facilitate um, just the behaviors in that classroom, as well as the instructional needs. So essentially we're adding three people for special needs. Yes. yes. Right, with the, with the special education teacher. It's just called something different as a school. I understand. Yeah. No. Okay. Sarah, can you clarify the title? Because if they're doing instruction, don't they have to be a teacher assistant? They're actually not going to do instruction. Okay. Um, they're just going to help support the classroom, um, the structure of the classroom. They won't be doing actual instruction. Only a teaching assistant um, and a teacher can do the instruction. And the and the new special ed position is? Um, I believe I brought up uh, last time the need for the K2-1211, a half-time position in the, in the elementary school for to meet the needs of those students in the 1211 capacity. Um, right now, those students have been pushed into the co-teaching class, and what happens is their levels are so low that it makes it um, difficult to have a co-teaching classroom. So what's happened is students' needs, um, you know, weren't met to the optimal, you know, standard. Unfortunately, so um, we have a K two, we have a twelve one one in the third and fourth grade level, um, and we just felt the need um, to have put that back in the K two level. Um, so that requires a half a, a half of a special education teacher, and then the other half will be shared um, with the middle school, which will help support. Um, the 15 one to one needs in, at middle school. Um, we have more students coming in with with more needs and we're not sending them to go see. So what's happening is that you know we're educating them here, but they can't be educated in the co top class because their needs are so low. Um, so we need a half the time teacher in the middle school to support ELA math, um, fifth and sixth grade. So, so you can have one person jumping through buildings like that. The yeah. schedule works okay? Yeah, we're working on it with Bryce um, to make it work. Um, but I, the one, one teacher will be able to fulfill both of those obligations. And the, the cost, the difference between keeping the students here and sending them to those cases, do we know that? Yeah. We have, a, not every student that's in the 12 by 1 will be sent to BOCES, but there's there's a, there's a handful, and the Bridges program, let me just look at, the Bridges program is about 30,000 per student. That's just for their program, that's not their related services, which could be their speech, their OT, their PT, um, any technology that they would need. So um, their programs could be anywhere between 45,000 and 70,000. Depending on the level of need, um, but having them 
here, what, the, what we do is we split the cost of the teacher and the aid among 12 students. So you see the cost per student would be much lower than if we were to send them to BOCES. And we can provide them the related services in the school um, with our current speech um, therapist, our OT. Um, and if they need PT services, we contract through Francis the Center. So they, they, um, they're with their peers. <coughs> um, but when you aid them out, when you do the aid formula for those kids that would go, right, versus the aid we get for this, because all of those things are aided, right? They're aided to go to OCs, right? We get aid on that money. And they're aided, the, the teachers are saying they're aided. So have we done the sort of math on how that shakes out? We did a while ago, and um, the high cost kids are called STAC. We pay for service through OCM BOCES, and she is responsible for tracking all those high cost students. Um, and so I believe we get aid back on anything over 30,000. Is that right, sir? Um, it's 277. Okay. So anything over 277, we get 100% reimbursed for um, those high cost students. In BOCES? Um, at BOCES and in, in our program here at Trillsburg. So, so we're spreading the cost out amongst five students that each student would have to pay. Am I getting this right? It was yes. initially right. like $45,000 years ago. 40000 we sent children up there by creating the environment here. It was actually more cost effective. You could have a number. It's not a hard number. We can get that number. Yeah, let's get that number. So that number, was that include the entire overhead to run the program? Well, we, we're not actually shaking out the overhead here because we already have the classroom and the lights are already on, and, and so we're not factoring that. Um, certainly, we could probably... So the class exists. It's just adding more students to it and more support. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the class room, currently the exists. Room, there are no teacher. The, the program doesn't exist. It used to exist, and, and now we have a need for it. That's right. That's right. So our real obvious costs are teacher benefits, the monitor and then you know if they're getting counseling services we already have an elementary school counselor in place we already have a social worker in place so we're just continuing the services through an existing person so it's not an add-on cost like it would be at OCs but we can work to get those more specific numbers and target the kids that we think would potentially have to go I mean not all of those kids would potentially need to go to OCs but there's a good number of them that would. Further questions? So th this is cost effective simply because we have so many children that we're not sending overseas that we're able to create this classroom so efficiently. Because otherwise it seems sort of counterproductive for what OCS is supposed to be. I mean, are they not supposed to be an organization that helps us with these costs? The idea is that she provide economy of scale. Economy of scale. But if we're, we're a large enough economy of scale, then we can do this ourselves. Yeah, and that's kind of it. Yeah, and I think, you know, if the benefit is that these kids can be here, and we can make sure that they're getting the education that they um, deserve. And I think the, the transition of us um, pulling more of our kids back from Moses is that um, we, we educate well. We educate our kids really well, and we can do a better job um, with giving them the services that they need, giving them the education that they need. And um, and families are, are, are families are better for it, and so are the kids. So I, don't, I, think, yeah. I don't tell right. that. I, I just, but that's different than whether it's less right. possible. I think there are two different things. I think you also have to look at the kids that are appropriate for BOCES program and the kids that are appropriate to keep back here and to be taught with the supports that we have in place. So we're hitting the kids that are more of that um, lesser need. Certainly there are the really violent, um, the heavily medicated, the extremely disabled kids that there is no way we could provide services to those kids and have it be cost efficient. Um, those aren't the kids that we're keeping back here. And we are sending the ones that have those extreme um, needs and, and thus that, that dollar is supported by sending them to BOCES for those fees. These, are, these aren't the same kids that we're keeping back here. These are kids that are sort of that in-between and if we just add some additional supports, we, we can get by 
and provide them a really sound education. Um, the, the distinction is BOCES does a great job, but they're, they're meeting the needs of a far different child. It's another layer. Right? You have to, you have to, so this it's on a continuum of closes services. cracks, or maybe continuum of cracks. It seems like yeah. it's just cost us more money. Yeah. So this was not, it's not really an economic decision. That's it's correct. Last year, correct. Correct. And it's not really an economic decision. It's not about saving money. It's about no, it's about meeting kids. these needs. We're not meeting these kids. Okay. All in favor? Not enough. Opposed? Uh, we'll take 8D individually, adoption of the 2012 13 Board of Education goals. For a motion? So moved. Second. And discussion? Do we have They're down about four pages. So everything's the same except this the common board thing. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, With the exception on the back page of a financial action, we had will support the creation of a business official position. With what? Is that that here? Yeah, First the, bullet under financial. On the back page under financial action, the very first bullet. We've already done that. So. Well, that's always good when you accomplish your goals before you write them. That's a pretty big trick. Yeah. So we should talk about this common court thing, right? Yes. I, I, don't, I don't really know what any of this means. Uh, I know it sounds like it's really good. Let's uh, leave it to the experts over let, let me start with just a question. Trubinsburg will incorporate all common core learning centers. So that's 100%. That's what we're doing. Do we have to do that by law? Uh, our state adopted the common core. Well, 44 states have adopted the common core. And uh, the part they're developing an assessment. It's probably the only place there's any money left in education nationwide. There are hundreds of millions of dollars, literally, on this park assessment. It'll be online, and we'll start seeing it in another, what, 19 months, 20 months, 2014. And then that will be what our what we're And so the real, the real elegance of this first goal is the vertical and horizontal. Yes. So how are we going to, what does that look like? Are we already doing it? How does that look? Yeah, we're, um, we're having the conversations yes. with, um, with the teachers within the grade levels, um, you know, to making sure that every teacher in third grade is doing the same thing and has the same priorities for those standards, as well as making sure we're doing it um, between K and 12. So for ELA, we're making sure that we're aligning it, um, the progress of their skills from K to 12. Um, there's, there's a, 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 a progress that is documented at each grade level. So this, this is the continual work of our teachers and our department, our program coordinators, the work that they will do um, this year. Um, this is a part of um, every one of the department's goals is to align to the Common Core. Um, and as a district, will help to support the teachers in really making sure that we're aligning and giving them the professional development that they need so, so that gets to my next question. How do we know that we're achieving this? What are the things we measure, measure. to do it? it? It sounds like you know certain pro professional development experiences, kids' criteria with SLOs. Is that how we measure? How how do we know we actually are that we did this? Or? We'll know by individual teacher by the SLOs because those are all connected common core standards so they have to cite a specific standard that they're going to assess themselves and we will know by the end of the year if they've grown in it if their students have grown right in so that's the horizontal right that's within the grid has it worked this way and the other isn't it's not quite as defined but it's through the work of the departments um, working K-12 or K-6 and 7-12 and, and that's really where we'll see the development of lessons and units that they'll turn into us to redo and then you can, it's, it's really a work in progress more than a, you know, an assessment. But that's where we'll start so to see. So if I could add on to Frank's question, a year from now, you're going to be able to sit here and tell us that we've been success and, and somehow be able to show us by adopting this that it proved to be successful. You can see that we, something good came of this. Yeah, sure. It would be very measurable. 
this way. This, this is the tricky part between K-12. Right, and that's the work of the teachers. Um, you think they're ready to take that on? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're seeing the gaps in the conversations that we're having, you know, between just, just K and A. I mean, looking at the writing process like we've done, just K and A, we see the gaps. And then knowing, um, just from my experience of being a school counselor in the high school, seeing these kids graduate and need to take their remedial um, English courses in, in college because they don't have the skills that they need for ELA to take a 100 level course in college. There's, there's this progression that's um, being more evident to the teachers and they're noticing it and they're wanting to move now. And this is a perfect time to move because you know, they're adopting the Common Core and this is a perfect time to align what they're doing with these new standards. So, and you feel good about it, department level being able to integrate vertically? Yes. I think you've already seen some, some results. Didn't you mention a while ago something about the fact that, especially with the elementary school teachers, that they were meeting on their own because they found that being able to engage in that kind of dialogue was very beneficial to them. Yeah. So in other words, this wasn't something that was scheduled that was on their own time. Yeah. So when you've got a staff that's willing to do that, put their own time in because they see the value, I think that does say something. They're starting to look at the gaps that they're seeing and looking at their resources and seeing, you know, our resources that aren't teaching this specifically because now it's really a topics but much more depth yeah. as opposed to a lot of different topics well, so we were having a conversation today as we drove back about does uh, everyday math which is our elementary math curriculum is it going to help us be successful in the common core and we're pretty yeah. sure it's not going to work uh, there are the teachers are already supplementing quite a bit and it really uh, the common core goes deep and everyday math gets it's like this spiral thing that hits all these topics and it, it's not working well. And, and it I, doesn't focus on fluency, so um, it used to be that the focus was on learning all of your multiplication facts, and then it shifted to you need to um, have an understanding of the concepts, and this really brings it to the middle where you need to be able to have your facts in place so that you can do the concepts, but it's implementing it all together. So it's, the teachers, I think, are like, yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. So they're, they're on board. There's also some uh, rubrics that, if there's a site called Engage New York, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's like the Common Core uh, Mission Control Central for the state of New York. And there's rubrics there that we will be able to use when we get a chance to chat about them, we just haven't had time yet, to really see, uh, to go into a teacher's classroom and observe a lesson and then see if it's aligned with the Common Core. And there will really be some instructional shifts. One is that some, uh, some things that our elementary teachers, and I don't know about here because I haven't had a chance to look, but I know where I came from, we found out that we really couldn't, uh, uh, counting money wasn't as important as just knowing your math facts. So telling time, some of those things that teachers spend quite a bit of time on, no pun intended, but uh, that they spend significant amounts of time on. Those aren't as important as just really knowing your multiplication and those math facts for those uh, younger students. So there are some real shifts. They'll, they'll add some things that they're not doing now and go deeper, and they'll need to let some things go. So well, let's hope somebody teaches them how to tell time. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope that happens somewhere. Did last spring, one of the conference days, they had um, the math representative from each grade level in the elementary school get together and look at the common core and talk about, okay, so I can see that now your grade level is going to pick this up, which means I'm going to let this go, and it's a real conversation. And then they went back to each of their grade levels and reported out, and then the grade level made plans about what changes they need to be made. So there are both conversations happening. The, the writing will change a lot also, a lot more of an emphasis. Uh, we heard it today talking about paired passages. You read this passage, you read this passage, you come up with meaning from both and create a new argument and you have to quote from both passages. It, to be honest, I think it feels a lot more like college writing all the way through. You know, having to you know, write from text and cite text. So our students will be much more critical thinkers, I think, by the time we get done with this. So does it relate to the second one? I have actually, I don't know. Maybe yeah, it does. It, yeah, really, it number one says let's do it, and then number two gets pretty specific around literacy and math. These are the shifts that they're asking our teachers to make. Uh, 
the, the staircase of complexity, making sure that an eighth grader is seeing eighth grade level um, literature and reading, reading material. So do we need them elucidated here like this, A, B? I, Sarah and I talked about this and, and we debated that because I, I liked our, the compactness, but it sure is powerful to say it right there in the board goals. That, that's up, you know, that's certainly up to the board. And we have SLOs that will help us measure all these. That's how, that's why we're doing this, they'll be, right? They'll, they'll be there. And I also think um, teacher observations, you know, you'll be able to see this stuff happening in the classroom with the observations. So this is like a common core slash HEPR set of goals. They relate. It's all, it's all related. So, so maybe we need to, how about, is, would the board feel comfortable putting a slash APPR to be very explicit that we've decided, we've decided, we've been told, and we do what we're told, so we're adopting the APPR thing as a board goal, because that sounds like one of the things there, is that completely different? It would be a separate goal because this is, is, this is what and how you would teach, and APPR is really how you would measure student growth and evaluate teachers and principals. So which raises the next question, should we set an APPR goal? That 100% of our, or 80% of our teachers, you can't say 100%, 80% well, um, of our teachers get, what is that gifted one? What's the good one? I, functioning, is that what we've come to? You functioning, you have I don't know. By law, we have to implement APPR, and to put a number on it this year, if by contract, would be, it's, really? We're still negotiating. Yeah, we're, we're actually still yeah negotiating some of the language, um, so that would be a hard one right now. Well, we could talk yeah. about it. <laughs> we could talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they would talk about it. <laughs> the board sets a goal of eighty percent. What what is the highest achievement you get as an teacher? Highly effective. Point. Highly effective. Uh, the new guy, uh, we all had to ask him. All our children are above average. Well, <laughs> so, Frank, it's a little different. I mean, they set it up. It's, all, it's almost impossible to be highly effective. The goal is that the teachers are effective. We want effective teachers. If we have a couple. What's after effective? effective? It's, it's a highly effective, effective developing. developing. Which way are you going? <laughs> so, they have a four thing That's, rubric. There's no yeah. middle ground. Yeah, right. And That's very deliberate, right? Well, I'm sure. So our goal is that. Uh -huh. So and you don't want to, you don't think, no one here thinks we should have a goal of 95% of our teachers should be affected. Well, well I, I think it's too soon. What can you do about it? It's, it's too soon? It's not reasonable. I think it's too soon. I mean, well, instructional shifts have been given to our teachers. Well, as kind of the emphasis on creating student independence learning and that's what really would make a teacher highly effective is if their students are independent and they're learning. But my feeling is, here's why I would argue for, for this to be a goal. Because this is how we spend our money. At the end, sometimes, not always, but this is sort of the way we are trying to spend our money. Last time I checked, this entire board meeting so far has almost been about APPR. It comes up every other sentence. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're spending money on it. Shouldn't we be so if we don't like percentages, what do we like? Do well, we like we're actually going to do what the New York State tells us to do? Well, right. right. You have to measure something when you don't even know what it looks like. Well, you that, need time to be able to describe it and then be able to see whether or not it's going to fit with yeah. what and you that's, want. I'm the Sarah. I think Jane's kind of in my head. Uh, I would like you to see the grading scale of, of an APPR, and then you could see what might be a goal. Because they, uh, they, and I'm thinking the legislature, whoever set this up, they intentionally made it so that Really, it's it's super on the curve. Very actually, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a it's kind of designed to I would say have a very small percentage of pre teachers and principals be uh, highly effective. And the, you need to see how the points fall out. Well, what about effective? Effective. effective Do we yes. feel good about effective? Yes. But you, your your argument is this thing doesn't exist yet. So not that it doesn't exist, but if you're going to measure it, you have to describe it, and there's still it's a work in progress. It's not done yet. I mean, so they there's, really yeah, the board there's, there's, it's, uh, can I just say it's, it's really complex. Yeah, the last memo I saw was 93 pages of minutiae about things. 
And so we're, and we're working on both an agreement with the Teachers Association and the Leadership Association. And when we have those, then I think that would be a good time to show the board what it is, how it's scored, what it really involves. Yeah. We and don't know what that's say. The goal should be to resolve this or get it into contract. Well, language. that's, so, I think, the way most of us have yeah. learned about it is through the contract negotiations, through the appeal process that we're trying to get into the country. Yeah. So, uh, but next year, that you can discuss. Right. Next year we're going to have a number. <laughs> yes. No, you don't like a number? I think it would be nice to have. I have no objection to putting <laughs> a very specific goal. I just want to know whether it's an orangutan or a peanut. There you go. I don't know. That's it. And we think it's mostly orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to see for sure. We want to see how big it is. Yeah, yeah, we, we care about this language. We got to prove this language. You're being the wrong. Yeah, we also oh, have to. The, the, there's a similarity between record. the Common Core standard and the uh, <laughs> what it says and the action under academic achievement. So how do you blend either these two or draw a definite line so they're not parallel? Common Core is a pro seems a process to me. It's 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 a sort of a there are outcomes, but it's a more of a process oriented thing. It's never done. It will never be. That's why we need a number <laughs> because this way it will never be. It's never achieved. You're always sort of doing. It. It's like that one goal about a budget. We're going to make a budget. Yeah, but we're going to scratch that top one. TC to have made a fiscally responsible budget. We, we haven't done that in the five years I've been But we're heading there. <laughs> we're we're trying. Trying. We, we do need to scratch the next line of that one, though. Uh, because I'm already sitting here. Uh, yes. We're Kimberly's position was created. See, you accomplished that. She's here. Brad, keep in mind that we've assigned a specific number. That can also be living. Not if we say 100%. I think that would be the one. Because then when we get 100%, Glenn will buy me a beer at the golf course. Every one of them. If it's still open. No, I actually don't think that we should put that kind of goal in there. You don't? No, I think there should be limitations. Yeah. 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 We won't have that. We won't have that. Well, that's, 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 well, that's, well, 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 but is this, but is your discussion about the 100% of graduation rate? Is that what you're no, he's off the, we got him off the, right. I said I was wrong. Okay, I didn't hear that. <laughs> Just wanted to have it on. Oh, the way it's worded though, maybe it's the way we should word it, is that we are working together as a team. And that's the way it's worded. An environment where you are pushing everything graduates and have that 100% of the Anyway, just see. Well, this is, this is failure, primarily right? the goal in the direction of the board to everyone else that this is what we're striving to attain. I'm on board for the next year. Well, yeah, we have to the I mean, here's the only thing, you know, and, and the funny thing, <laughs> the funny, the funny, I, don't, I don't want to belabor this, but, but you're absolutely, I mean, I don't think anybody argues about the number, but we made funding and personnel decisions, it seems to me, to support John's Learning Center in support of that goal, even though the 100% wasn't attainable. So I guess as long as we keep doing that, we seem focused on something, whether there's a number there or not, actually, I don't mind your language about this is what we're going to work towards, because we use that to say we're going to yes. fund this and not that. This will drive curriculum decisions, curriculum purchase decisions. Sure. And professional development. I don't you think yes. this will drive professional development, curriculum purchase? Yeah. Summer curriculum projects. Summer at already did this summer, right? It's a yeah, for curriculum for the future. I think it's it's really important. So the, the last question. Filter. Less the word, is there any wording changes that anyone's uh, finds so? Well you're taking out that first line under financial, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I just took eleven, twelve goals and threw common core standards in the middle. Do we want anything more specific on the facilities? Do we want to say specifically about a capital project? I mean we're gonna spend the better part of the fall working on a referendum. 
<laughs> you have today? No, I just moved it. Our reserves are in less than for this time. So it would be wise not to touch that just to our capital reserve is less than we thought. Do we know how that happened? Pardon? The yeah. capital <laughs> reserve is less than we thought. Oh, that's what we were just talking that about. Sorry. Um, it's not less than we thought. Um, don't, quote, it don't quote me to the day. So the, in 10 11, I believe, don't quote me. Um, so it was the budget before 11 12, which would have been 10 11. There was a proposition in the board document for uh, the capital building reserve to go up to 3.5, um, not including the interest. And um, at that time, there was roughly maybe 60,000 that was in an existing capital reserve. And so that would also be added to it. Um, How much did we put in? And then in 11 12, I believe, prior to me, 2 6 was added. And then it, we dissolved the Edlar and we added 400,000 more. Okay. And so now we're up to 3,066,000. This is good, 000. what do you think? Um, originally 3.5. Well, right? that's the cap is 3.5. Well, that's what, but when they talked about how far or how much of a capital project you can do without an impact to the taxpayer. They used that 3.5 million number? They used the 3.5, which would allow a 10.8, if I'm not mistaken, Right. So I mean, if we're going to further this project, the capital project, we either have to diminish or we have to look at the expectation of raising the tax uh, accordingly. And, and I would like to recommend that we look at revising the capital project to just the three million, um, because again, not so having finalized. So we right now, if this says we can do ten point eight. Yeah, we're ten point five. So how big is how much is that number going to change? Um, we no. will work with Bernie Donegan's team to yeah, no. rerun all of those so numbers. So there's a discussion. We should stick to the goals here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I just wondered if we should change that. Yeah. So it sounds like this point. Right. 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 So any further changes? Uh, less a, a little wordsmithing between uh, the academic achievement common core because the action on the academic achievement is quite similar to the common core. Or we're not worried about that. With the the phrase providing a staircase of complexity with no explanation as to what it specifically is, and I can interpret a number of things about that. Everything uh, else we've got in other words would be made it clear it's saying work fiction reading and content areas and more expository writing. But yeah. I'm not too sure that the community would understand what providing a staircase of complexity would be. I and that uh, I can give that explanation. It's okay. that uh, seventh grader uh, regardless of their reading level is exposed to seventh grade curriculum and seventh grade level um, uh, challenges i mean it, i think too often in education we as, as seventh grader we struggle it's maybe getting exposed to fifth grade level things and this and the common core and these six shifts say we still need to expose our seventh graders or eighth graders whatever that's the staircase second graders fifth graders whatever grade they are expose them to curriculum that's at that level because they just get farther and farther behind as we continue to um, fix the curriculum, lower the level for them. So that's what that's about. I don't know how to word that exactly in, in a short phrase. That's how the state words it, um, but it's very similar to um, the vertical alignment. Um, right, but you understand my point is yes, that yes. these are sort of catchphrases which if you're not in yes. the industry you may yes. not necessarily know and since one of the other goals would be building an academic vocabulary. Maybe we need to help the rest of us be able to build our academic vocabulary in terms of yes. education needs. Sure. Um, for, I, I have uh, what the state has here for the series of complexity. Um, and it just says each grade level requires a step of growth on kind of the staircase to get students career, uh, college, and career ready. Um, I'm sure we can find more clarification on that, you know, to add after that statement, but, um, you know, it's, all the things I'm thinking are full of other words. 
Yeah. 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 More education needs to expand right. out. Well, we can uh, table this and uh, set the ideas. Uh, we, we got another that. board meeting to adopt this. Yes, right. And we can do this uh, the next time around. We, we can rephrase that one. Hope oh, there's we'll anything else something. that anyone would like to change. You definitely can do that. So we'll table that. Eight, uh, E and F. For a motion for the central activity treasurer so moved. and the appointment of instructional staff. So moved. A second. Yeah. Discussion. Um, the, the, the starting salaries of some of our new teachers is high. Must be based on their experience. Yes. And they get tenure in two years, which means they have worked. Correct. One had 10 years experience, or one had almost 11 years experience, and what did the other teacher have? Eight. Eight. I have a question on the salary for the drive rented position. If my math is correct, if this were an administrator earning this salary, they would be paid more than we're currently paying any of our building principals by a substantial amount. Did you have a chance to read John King's I, uh, explanation of how I, we got there? I did, um, just a second ago, yes. But still, I mean, how are these, it's nice that BOCES is paying $43 an hour, but so if, if my math is incorrect, administrators work 260 days a year. At 10 hours a day times 40 dollars $40 an hour comes out to about a hundred and five thousand dollars for a salary. Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean which we don't pay. And certainly a drive red teacher doesn't have the responsibility that a building administrator has. And Matt McClendon is a dear friend of mine, so I feel badly even mentioning this, but I mean forty three dollars an hour just seems like an ungodly amount of money to be paid. That's cumulative, though. That's not just for the driving instruction. That's also for setting up the program and doing the administrative aspects. So no, the front is wearing hats. Yeah. So to split it into three in terms of teaching instructional and then administration, which is what we were paying most of the Well, I, I'm not sure anyone else in the district is getting $43 an hour. Are they? Getting, it Have we looked at number G also? It says G? Yeah, I have. So it's where you get 43. It's 40, right? It's 40. It says 40. Yeah, so, so it's. Flip it over to G. There's a stack of funds. And then another 1,500. Yeah, so that's the highest paid employee in the school district? Not quite. On an hourly basis. On an hourly basis. I believe it is. Do we uh, table this and wait for John King? Or. Uh, let's just table it for Mr. Yeah, King. Yeah, let's let 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 John come in. You want to just pull that first line only? Yes. Yeah, let's get to some NG. I want Matt to be paid for the work he's done. I, I'm just concerned that that seems like it. Uh, I thought that's why John was indicating one was a stipend, which is a different way of looking at it, and the other one was a 6,500 that he had been. But the, I think what you're saying is you, you're questioning the assumption of $4,000. Yeah, that, that's your question. Yeah, my, not not the actual amount of money. Oh, no, I, no, but that was the hourly rate. It's the hourly. So it's, it's just John made an assumption at forty dollars an hour. I guess we just want to hear why he paid forty dollars an hour. Okay, I, he didn't say why he paid forty dollars an hour. He just said we determine the figure based on estimated work and an hourly rate of forty dollars. We'll pull it. Big guy. We'll pull it. G out too. And G, the stipend portion, we'll pull out. Okay. It's summertime. Summer. Any further uh, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, let's, let's do H and I, which would be the CPS. There's no I. Well, there is, but she walked uh, Can we do We're that? We're walking on 8I CSE CPSE recommendations. Okay. They're which included in the packet. We don't have a motion. Uh, look for a motion for H and I. Move. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Did we do H and I in the yeah, just did H and I together. H and I together. So we're going to be, and this is going to be. 
Okay, we're, uh, we're we're going to pull 9A. So 9B and 9C. Look for a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. John, could you reiterate what it is we're discussing? Possibly? I'm sorry. B approval of stipend. Uh, uh, Kyle Schmidt. Okay. Which we're not supposed to mention, I guess. And uh, the sexual activity treasurer for two months. Okay, so under old business nine, letters B and C, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm no, I, I'm sorry. Little interference, so we got a fan over here. here. I can hear it too. Okay, so we have first, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 9D, uh, the food service, food service catering of 2025 an hour. I'd like a motion, please. So uh, moved. Second. second. Discussion. What is this? Um, that you're, is food, you're food queen, right? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> that is our uh, director of food service um, at times is asked to provide for um, if we do professional development and oh, teachers are not good. going to be allowed to break. Um, then if the request is written, then we can run it through our food service program and this is the hourly rate that we would pay Excellent. for that. So they can have food? Only if it falls within a meal time, there's no break for lunch, Make sure and they're talking to business to the whole time, and we, list sure the people. <laughs> and we list the people that are in attendance. <laughs> Very good. rare. Absolutely. Make every T and cross and I got it. Not going to do this often. Oh, it's a food thing. The whole thing is here, right? <laughs> but we're not giving them muffins or anything. No, we don't. Can't buy them. Can't buy the beach Because it's right. called a gift of public. Here we go. Funds. Here we go. She's into this. This is one. Yeah. You can't bring an apple. Oh, they're going to write can, it down. You can donate an apple. <laughs> they, oh, incoming is good. Outgoing. outgoing. Right. So incoming is great. Are we going to see that as, as an item? Donation? No. The school district can't purchase. Right. Oh. It's a matter of school district not purchasing. But the kids have to donate. We're getting much better at it. Oh, yes, we are. I'm so glad about that. <laughs> so let me take up. Uh, so let's have the vote on D. Any more questions on D? Okay, all fair? Aye. All right. Uh, e appointment hearing officers, Michaela Parada and Brent Cooley. Any motion? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, discussion? All fair? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, sorry. I, I got to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, are they uh, stipended? Do we already have pay for these services or and we're just utilizing them or th this will be an additional charge? That would be an additional charge. Um, I know Michael, you spoke with Michaela and the fee if she had to step in and be the hearing officer for a superintendent's meeting is X number of dollars per hour. We've never used her. We haven't used her ever. Just a to backup do that. in case we hey, need that's somebody. Somebody. That's my question. We often will get a neighboring district to okay. step in or go see superintendent will do it. Okay, for the discussion on the appointments. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Back to yeah. that. We a motion on substitute rate of pay and non tuition resident fees. So moved. Second. Discussion? Is, is there any change? No. What I might add to this, the reason why this couldn't be changed is because this is built on our approved budget in May. Okay. If we're anticipating changing, uh, substitute teacher pay for instance it would have to be part of our development well and it's mostly consistent with the evening yes right. and, and the community very good point that it, uh, yeah it'd be poor timing to change this now because we budgeted based on these numbers any yeah, further discussion the g2 the world not g is yes all right good any further discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed uh h with for a motion for so h Building use rates. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? As I understood, we're not necessarily charging these as just in place in the event that we had. Correct. It's part of policy. And it's a it's um I think it was a board meeting ago or two that we looked at what we bring in 
from admissions and it is covering the cost of our supervision at those events. So we'll leave it the same. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I didn't get I in that, so I is at the uh, athletic contest admissions and the approval of school lunch prices. I and J. J, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, are you doing I and J? Yes. So, so moved on I and J. Second. Any discussion? The only changes here, as I understand, on lunch prices were the adult. The adults. Correct. And we're in line pretty much with every other. Correct. Just we were not able to raise the K-8 or 9-12 prices because we are um, still at this point slightly higher than neighboring districts. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, K, authorization to disposal of the property from the music department. So moved. Second. 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 Discussion? This was, oh, can I, uh, Phil, I'm just a sec for that. I did talk with Sarah Postgate about that. Part of the reasoning is uh, that in that whole long list, there's there's really only a small section that uh, we're trying to sell back to Hickey's or whatever the name there. Most of the stuff and, they can't find. Yeah, and we're still having to insure it, so it's good to get it off our books. And it's things that have either been lost or are really not usable. So I would recommend that we get this cleaned up. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Policy we have none. Any board forum? Thanks to Douglas. Uh, a nice night, right? Yes. Thank Very you. Good. I, I, yeah, the board forum would be the facilities, which we were talking about before, uh, which is, uh, I mean, every time I talk about facilities, good information is not good. <laughs> Just forget. Our revenues go down and the cost of stairs go up. Yeah. That's right. We got less money. I'm not going to talk. I promised my mother to talk about the cost of the stairs. Well, we didn't. That's right. <laughs> 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 but Gary uh, and I went to a meeting uh, about a month ago and uh, they said that they I was not there. She was available. And so I'm wondering, and, and I have to, again, we just, Michael and I just had this conversation today. I was looking at fund balance, other numbers. Yeah. Um, so I really need to firm that up with Bernie down again to office because I am not 100% certain that they factored in the 3-5. Because the I've given, I've given, versus the 3-5. Versus, okay. versus the, yeah. I don't know if they factored in the 3-5 toward this capital project or just the 3, because they, they have all of my financial spreadsheets. So they, they know that there was only 3 in there. That so it could be factored on the three at this point. We have a meeting on the 15th, oh, I, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I'll represent you. Yeah, I'm not worried. You might be here, though. You're going to be gone. I got to go to the That's OK. OK. Well, uh, at any rate, uh, what we had talked about before mm -hmm. is uh, a project that was around uh, 10 and a half million. A, a new capital project. We had started out uh, throwing everything out and onto the table, and it was 17 or something like that. And, and then our, our uh, Beardsley and uh, the rest of our uh, facilities people uh, looked at it carefully, talked with Michael, he went up, and, and uh, Jim Sylvester looked at it and cut it down to about 10 and a half. And the 10 and a half was based. I mean, the, the whole project is based on the assumption that we're not having any tax impact. And I believe that's where the board's at. Uh, sure. And it's, there's a lot of things you can do and still not have any impact. I, I think that it, it, may, it may get down to, to eliminating things that are here to some people's hearts, but uh, we just have to do it. So we'll where, where are you at with this? Well, I think to be honest, I mean, to follow what Peter said, we've already taken things out that are near and dear to people's hearts, so I was at the table. Uh, way back when, I think when we first put the building condition survey together, we were talking around 23 million. Um, for all the ones? For, well, that was everything on the five year plan. Everything. All the ones came to 17 million and change. Our first go around with Beardsley Design last. Monday was 13.6 we got to, and then um, we've taken and whittled that down to 
like 10, 6 something, I think, is the, what it rounded up to. And but what you can, there's a spreadsheet that will be available to board members, and what you'll see in there is there's still some line items that are zeroed out. And we've got it set up so we can toggle things on and off that will actually put the dollars in or take the dollars out and change the bottom number. You, so you can see when we start having these conversations and making decisions about what's out and what's in, what the financial impact is going to be. So along those lines, yep. just so that we're clear from the very get, mm -hmm. these aren't real numbers. These are placeholders. No. Correct? No. They're not placeholders. No. If you remember, um, a few months ago, um, Judy Pastel um, increased Jim Slovesk's involvement in this project as kind of an overseer. Um, he does what's called the constructability review. He reviews all of the estimates to make sure that all of those incidental costs that you hear about are still in there. So not only verifies construction costs looking three to five years out, but also adding in about a 30% escalation for all the other stuff. Um, they've gone over all of those numbers twice. So, though these are, you know, what you would call estimate or educated guesses, if you will, nobody can control the construction market, and cost of materials, or labor rates. Or well, I know, but it, it just seems strange to me, Mike, that there's a whole hell of a lot of forty-seven thousand dollar things and a whole sort of forty thousand dollar things, and so it looks like a placeholder. It's, in other words, you know, it's exactly forty-seven thousand for the estimated cost. I guess I'm trying to get at well, where, you know, remember right now this is happening across, I don't want to bring up the stair thing, but that's what I mean. Yeah. You get a placeholder. I don't mean that we find things. I'm not talking about when you get into it, you find things. I'm not talking no, about no. that. That's a whole other thing. Right. I'm talking about, uh, how about this? How confident are you in these numbers at this stage of the game? At this stage, I'm pretty confident. We're 10% one way or the other? Okay. We're doing this exactly backwards from how you would do a project I know, yeah, in your home. I know. So that's the hard that's part, hard. you know. Um, so these numbers we're trying to forecast with a crystal ball three to five years out. That's very difficult to do. But I'm very confident that they put in the time and effort and the resources to try and get these numbers as real as they can possibly be at this stage. Okay. okay. There are still some things in that list that there's a couple of them that are placeholders, two big ones. Um, art and Technology High School, Art and Technology Middle School. Because we know during our conversations with administrators that we're going to have to renovate those spaces to meet the needs of the curriculum of the program. That hasn't been defined yet. So what you're looking at is a per square a per square foot cost to do HVAC, lighting, new plumbing, some new casework, without actually knowing the specifics of how much technology equipment are they going to want? How much are they going to change the program? Are they going to want table saws and lathes? Are they going to want computers to do CAD? We don't know any of that yet because we haven't had the programming conversation. So right now, those are just placeholders per square foot until we can more clearly define what the needs are. If we can't clearly define the needs, then we can make it zero. So, because um, I, I just, what I don't want to do, what I'm worried about, and you guys were at that meeting, I mean, what I'm worried about is what we've already, I just thinking back what we've been through, where, you know, we've had placeholders, and then as we get there, so what I'm wondering is, are we being advised, if this is in fact an educated guess, should we be 10% more than this number, or should we be 10% less? I mean, I'm trying to figure out, because ultimately we're going to have to put a referendum together, right? Which is a not to exceed number. So it would make sense to make it higher, right? And then and hope they come in lower, and then we got extra money to do a phase, whatever. That you do. Well, that's another camp that you do, but I mean, if our focus is to stay with no tax impact to the voters, and that maximum so that project, hard. if that maximum project size is based on our capital reserve fund zero tax impact and 10.8 is the max that's, that's it that's you right. can't go one dollar more it is 3.5 so then it's just a matter yeah. of what things happen once we figure out that number then we can kind of work backwards from there but we've we've really whittled it down to what we feel are failing systems or use or outlive their useful life talked about what things could we probably speak through another three to five years on and, and that's where we've tried to focus on. Um, so where are you at this? 
I don't think any of those numbers are real. I really don't. Just based on experience. I know I know that uh, you know Jim Tusk is an excellent at this, but these numbers are really thrown out there. There is not a hard number in there. I don't see a hard number in there. <laughs> no offense. You'll get but, a hard number when you get a bid. That's right. That's when you're going to get a hard exactly. number. Well, we got to get a number to get a vote. What, we got to get a number to get a vote. Exactly. That's, that's what, what we got to get. What I can get. say is, is back when we made the decision that we were going to bring Jim Sofeskis in and do some more oversight as far as these numbers, that has happened the next day. There's been a lot of time and effort in trying to get these numbers get to a reasonable level where we're comfortable that they're, they're in the range. So I think they've done a lot better job of that. And if you remember, a lot of it wasn't because that kind of work wasn't being done previously. Those numbers were changing. It just wasn't communicated to you. So a long span of time went by, and you only heard, you know, six right. months went by, and you never knew about everything that was taking place in the middle. We're trying to keep you in the loop now with more communication, you know, some more direct um, And the seekers budgeted for, or is that a separate line item? That's, that, all, that's already part of the pre-referendum package that, that you kind of that, that's all that's all right. was already done. Okay. I think what we have to decide is, is first of all how much money with zero impact we have. Yeah. That's a that's a big number. Okay. That's an important number. And then we have to decide if we've got three million in the capital project, do we want to spend it all? And that not much. In the capital so, reserve. Because it will have to be replaced at some point. Right. Right now, it is not looking like we will have funds in the near future to replace any of that. So, in my opinion, our next capital project, following the one that's on the table right now, um, we would borrow everything. Not the excess funds. <laughs> Most everything. Well, because there won't be a sure. capital reserve. Well, our ability to fund reserves like we have in the past is, is over. Fun. But of course, we shouldn't have been allowed to fund the reserves right. the way we did. We just right. had it. Right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Well done. Thank you. See you in three weeks. Or